Hey there, underwater spotters of Kentucky here. We got a little seven horse motor we're going to work on. It's an Esca. Yeah, basically a Sears boat, Sears motor. They used to rent these lots. So I got it for a little or nothing. So I'm going to take it apart. It's been sitting in the garage for a year now, so I'm going to take it apart and take a look at it. I thought maybe you all might want to come along with me. So I'm going to take this cover off. Luckily everything's pretty loose so far. I do have screwdrivers sitting here and wrenches and stuff like that. So let's see how clean or dirty this is. Uh, the lid's not too bad. It's got a little dirt. I'll clean it up after a while. Let's see. The engine looks pretty good. Let's see here. Uh oh. Chains broke off inside I guess. Yeah, I've got it sitting up on the mount pretty high. It looks like I drained it though. Let me, uh, let's see, we've got a spare plug here. That's one thing I do like about these little motors. Let's see if it turns. Oh yeah, it'll turn. Let me turn this thing around here. Oh yeah, good compression. I don't know if you're familiar with these, but you got your choke here. Ooh, that's nice and smooth, thank goodness. I will spray it there. Now for rust preventative and lube, I like to use this fluid film. I don't know what everybody else likes to use, but that seems pretty good stuff. Oh yeah. I use it on the handle, it turns pretty good. Fold up, so that's a good thing. You got a lot of cobwebs in here. A lot of dust on it and cobwebs. I need to clean it up a bit. No, oh, throttle's good. Well, of course, I got the carb cleaner and I got PV blaster in case something's stuck in there, but. Seems like so far we're doing pretty good. I do want to get, hold on, I'll be right back. I'm going to get something to get that chain out. We're going to try two different things here. I'm going to try a magnet first. Get the dirt off of it. I don't want to get dirt down in there. Don't know if I can get it out of there. No. Keeps coming off in there. I might turn this thing up on its side. Okay, I see it. Let me grab it with this other one. Everything is so long for this height I'm working on. <laughs> Magnets catching it. Doesn't that figure? Ah, got it. Look at there. Okay, so I'll fix this. It's supposed to catch right here, and then your cap goes on here. So I'll put a little spacer on there, or I'll change the chain altogether. I think that'll come off. So I'll go ahead and put that aside. I'll Wrap it in a paper towel. Put that aside, and then I'll put another one in the tank to keep any dirt from getting in there. Uh, I think first I better wipe this off. Hopefully we don't have to take this apart all the way. I can just give it a nice cleaning. It'll be ready to go. Now, we're not going to get out in there and do anything unless we're called out emergency. We're not going to do anything until spring. Um, now, if we have a family calls and they're wanting us to find somebody for them, that's a different story. But 
right now there's nothing going on. I'm in northern Kentucky and we don't really have anything going on right now, so we're just going to play it by ear and we'll see what happens and you know, kind of relax, do a little work on stuff, clean up, get all the equipment ready. Now, we don't have a, a nice inflatable boat that's portable. We have a little aluminum flat boat. And uh, actually, it's not even a flat boat, it's an aluminum Sears boat. So, we don't have anything fancy. We don't have brute magnetics yet. We are eventually going to try to get some, but right now we got a little another brand. I'm thinking it's Max Magnets or something like that. So, which for us is just fine. I see these guys getting their magnets stuck on bridges, and stuck underwater on stuff, and having to go in and get them or lose them, and yeah, you know, sixty, seventy bucks. Even the cheapest one, I think, is, what, 40 maybe? You know, we can't afford to throw that amount of money away, so, you know, we're, we're not a, we're not paid, and we definitely, none of us have money, so we have just enough to get by, enough to feed our families, and enough to live off of. I drive a old 94 truck, so nothing fancy there either. So we make do with what we have. I'm not knocking any of the other guys. I love that they have these new boats and new equipment, new motors, and uh, new uh, surveillance or underwater systems, you know, the hummingbird and all that. I love that they have that. Eventually, I hope I get one. hope I get a helix or something, but for now, we're just going to use magnets, and until I get my dive certification, we'll use underwater cameras. I made a few for my paranormal channel, and we used to do some underwater stuff. So... Yeah, we'll use what we have until we can afford to do a little better. And uh, I'm not going to knock anybody. You know, it's great that everybody has this good equipment. And uh, hopefully I can get them to come down and use it down here if we run across something we need help with. So... I'm trying to keep talking to you all, but I'm also trying to get all this cleaned up, so if I get kind of quiet on you, I don't think I'm not wanting to talk to you. Just trying to get this done. I'm going to spin this around a little bit here. There. I'm using carb cleaner to clean the, the outside here. I've got brake free also. I could use it to clean it, but eh, carb cleaner is okay. Now, the thing I like about this motor is it's simple. It has the uh, has the idle adjustment which is not your speed control. You got your speed here. You got stop, shift zone, start, and fast. So, you know, you can start off slow, speed up. If you're in idle, that's where the idle control comes in. You can slow down and speed up your idle. But it's a really good motor for what it is. And it'll push that little boat I have, no problem. Matter of fact, <laughs> It, it pushed one of them little inflatables around pretty good, too. It might be too much, but I don't know. I don't know what they rate them at. But another thing I like about this is it's got your gas tank up here, and then turn this around here. I don't know if you can see right here. There's a, uh, you can't see my hand right there. It's straight below here. I mean, no, I'm not going to get it in view. 
not without moving that camera down. Let me just drop that camera a little bit. Right here, there's a rubber cap and there's a metal adapter there and I've got the adapter that snaps on for an external fuel tank. Let me actually take that cap off and let you see that. Let me get a light. Give you a little idea of what I'm talking about. So right here, you pull this rubber cap off, and I don't know if you can see my finger right there. Right there, that fuel line snaps on, and there's a ball valve in there, and you can run your external tank there. When you're not running your external, you put that rubber cap on, and you put your fuel up here. So I really do like this. I can carry extra fuel with me. I can run just this tank, but if I feel I'm going to be out there for a while, I'll take an extra tank with me, and we'll have the extra fuel so we don't get stuck somewhere or have to quit and come back in and fuel up. So it comes in handy to do that. Yeah, it's a messy workbench. Uh, forgive me for that, but we do a lot of work around here. Work on farm equipment. Uh, we've got a milling machine and a lathe. I do a lot of machining. It's a metal lathe. Also got a wood lathe, but I do a lot of machining of parts and stuff, especially on the farm if we break something and need it right away. Some of the older equipment you can't get parts for, so you got to do what you can do to keep things running around here. All right, let's check this side out. That looks pretty good. I'm going to drain that bowl on the carb, but for now, I don't think I'm going to mess with it. I'm going to put a little carb cleaner in here. Get that line. It really does not look bad. I don't know if you can see in there, but man, this engine is pretty spotless on the inside. So we'll wipe that off. Put a little fluid film on it to protect it. I'll probably end up replacing all the fuel lines. I don't want to take a chance of getting out there and having a fuel line crack on me and <laughs> maybe even start a fire. That would not be good. So I'll replace the fuel lines before I take it out this year. But it is definitely going out this year. It's definitely going to see some action. Ah, there's the other heater. Alright, here's the other spark plug. They put that on there, be able to pull this out and change the plug, so we will pull this plug and check it out, see if I need to change it. Looks like I got an old plug in here, so let me go get some wrenches. pieces do not work well in the cold. No. A little bit bigger. I'll be right back. Alright, see if this socket will fit. Yes, got it. Again, that rubber piece is awful cold. Get it to stay on there. 
Now, for some of you guys that don't know what tools are or never turned a wrench and you're into this stuff, hey, if you're ever in Kentucky, you know, look me up. I'm more than willing to help you all out, teach you a few things. I'm not a, a great mechanic, but I work on just about everything. Okay, looks like I am going to need new plugs. This one's not bad, but it's not great either. It's pretty clean, no carbon buildup, but it's already discolored. Look the light. Well, you see that. I don't know if you can tell that or not. There's a little bit of it's just discolored. I mean, it's probably fairly new. It's probably only been fired a couple times, but I take a chance when you're out on the water. I'll put that back in for now to keep it from getting dirty. But before I do that, oh yeah. And one thing you got to watch with these motors. As the prop always turns. You put it in stop, and that prop is still going to turn. Shift zone you might be all right. Nope, still not all right. So it just slows it down enough that it's not going to really push you anywhere. But <laughs> this thing for reverse, you just got to turn the whole motor completely around, and that's your reverse. So you're actually reaching over top to go in reverse. So. Yeah, it's fun, fun, fun. Alright, so this is on nice and tight. Don't over tighten these. I have a tendency to over tighten stuff. I can break a grade 8 bolt. Not good. So I'm gonna check this one out. Give it a little spray. See how bad a shape it's in. I got a bucket here. I'll do my spraying in the bucket. I don't want this stuff to go all over. No, this one's in the same shape. Clean as can be, just a little bit of color difference from where it probably ran maybe once. So, I mean, if you don't know much about mechanics and plugs and stuff, you probably aren't going to understand what I'm saying, but that's a pretty clean spark plug right there. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a couple new ones. I'll get two new ones. And I will probably run these local when I'm just doing, you know, practicing stuff or setting up or maybe doing a little diving and have a friend run around on the boat. That's what I'll use them for. And I'll put two new ones on before we go anywhere. So. I'm gonna clean the inside of this cover because it is the worst. I don't know how the cover got so dirty. And everything else is fairly clean. I like to keep all my equipment clean. Let stuff get dirty while you're out there, and that can cause issues. You clean it, if you're doing regular maintenance, when you're cleaning it, you can see stuff. You can see leaks, you can see cracks. So keep everything clean, be safe out there. That goes for everybody. I don't care how experienced you are. 
keep your equipment clean. That way you stay safe. Check your equipment quite often. Use a little motor. I don't care if it's an electric trolling motor. Electric motor, it doesn't matter. If you're out there putting around or or looking for stuff, you do not want to break down out there. Chances are you're going to have somebody close, but why take the chance? You know, just stay safe out there. It's not worth not going to maintenance on stuff. It's not worth it to be out there and break down. Alright, the inside cover is clean. I'm going to put it back on. We will put that cap back on. Matter of fact, I think I'll put it, I'll clean the top of this cover real quick. Right where that is. It is cold. We've got a fire going. I had the propane heater on before. Uh, out of kerosene, so I couldn't have the kerosene heater going. You would understand if you saw how big a garage this is. It's big enough to to put probably two trucks, tractor, a car, a couple of motorbikes, a boat, uh, the milling machine, the bandsaw, the metal lathe, the wood lathe, other wood working equipment. Right, it's it's not a small garage. So alright, we got the cover on get the gas cap. Yes, I'm going to work on the cap, but for now I want to cover it. That way, when I'm cleaning, I don't get any dirt in it. So, now, you don't have to be spotless, but, like I said, the cleaner it is, the better you can tell if you have any issues. Right, look at how dirty this side is. And look at how clean that side is. So big difference. So now, does the outside matter as much? No, not at all really. Outside could be dirty as can be. I just want to clean it. <laughs> I don't want to look like a total slob out here on the water. Look like I got some decent equipment. I do need to stick that sticker back on a little bit. Like I said, it may not be the best, but I know it gets me to point A from point A to point B safely. It works. Because I'm keeping it running, keeping the maintenance up on it. <sighs> All right, let's loosen these up. Let's tilt this motor a little bit. Start wiping you underneath here. Alright, sorry if I'm boring you here, but something has to be done. I just wanted to let you all know that we are getting ready to be out there on the water. Let you know about our channel a little bit. Uh, let me give you a little insight on some of us. I'm a veteran. I was in the United States Navy. I'm not going to say what I did. That's, you know, doesn't matter. We've got uh, 
couple just factory workers. We got people, you know, lawyers, police department, jailers. We're working on getting a, a wide variety of people. Um, right now, there's just four of us, but we are trying to expand out. Uh, I just do farm work. I'm pretty much disabled, but I've been working on getting back on my feet. You know, there for a while I was down, really depressed. Didn't want to do much. Didn't think I could do anything. My body was killing me. Hurt ever to do anything. It hurt just to get up out of a chair. But I got away from soft drinks. Started drinking water. And started getting back into the swing of things. I've been down for a few years. Quite a few years actually. Uh, this past summer is the first year I've felt decent enough to actually get out and do a lot of stuff, so I uh, started messing around and working on the farm more and working on equipment more and taking more responsibility around here. And I'll tell you what, it feels good. It really does. It feels good to get back out on my feet. I was active when I was younger, before and after I was in the military. I've done everything from drag racing cars, dirt bike, uh, four-wheelers. I've done demolition derby, uh, all kinds of boating stuff, hunting and fishing, of course, target shooting. The guns were my favorite. That's something, again, I won't get into experience, but I'll just leave it at that. But yeah, I love shooting guns. I love hunting. So, whew, that's really dirty. Let me tip this up a little bit. Yeah. Looks like the person I had this before me might have ran the oil a little bit strong in the fuel. Now, I do not want to get it down into this porthole. You can't see it, but it sucks in water down here and it pushes it out the back here where the spin is, which I'm sure you cannot see right now. That's what I'm wiping off. But, uh, it's really oily. Should not have been that much oil on it. Just hoping it's not leaking. That should be just water and a little bit of exhaust coming out. We do have a shaft down here and a place that you put oil in, but I hope it's not leaking out that bad. This prop is probably going to have to be replaced. It's a small one. And it's got a nick out of it. So, you start getting nicks out of your prop, then you might start running a little wobbly, and then you got a problem with tearing your bearings up. So, we don't want that to happen. I'm going to turn this a little sideways here. Hopefully you're not bored. Hmm. Safety glasses, yeah. Almost got me. It was splashing. It's one thing I'm bad about. You have to put safety glasses and stuff like that on. I need to. Alright, there's the vent. Let's turn it again. There's fuel shut off, by the way. 
Not that it matters to any of you, probably. I don't know why I pointed that out. I guess I just pulled stuff out for you. Anyway, we're going to leave it at this. We're going to just say, hey, do maintenance on your equipment. Keep it up to date. Make sure it's, you know, running good. Check it every so often. You know, just be safe out there. All right, I think I'm pretty much going to shut this down because I don't want to bore you all with this parking on this motor so much. But if I run into anything exciting, <laughs> hopefully I don't broken gears or anything. There is a gear and a shaft that goes down or then you got a shaft going this way and little gears in between there. Hopefully knock on wood. They're not broke or anything. Chips in them. So but I'm going to shut down for now. I don't want to bore you all with this too much. So, um, I will finish what I was saying, though, about being disabled. Um, yeah, if you're disabled, get back up, get going, get out there and do things. Diet soft drinks aren't even good for you. you know, I'm sure the soft drink manufacturers are going to be a little upset with me. I'm not, I'm not saying don't drink them at all. But cut back, drink a lot of water. You know, if you don't like water out of your sink, get a filter. Brita makes a nice filter. I'm sure there's others out there. Um, buy bottled water. You know, just drink a lot of water. It's a lot better for you. I know I feel a lot better now. I've turned a couple of my friends on to water and they're doing a lot better. But I was disabled had no income couldn't even do the farm work so it was i was in bad shape i was really depressed too um but you just gotta you just gotta wake up one day and say hey enough is enough i'm i'm just gonna try just try you know you hear stories about people out there all the time that missing limbs and stuff and they make big deal out of them and yeah it's bad but i'm not taking away from them people they do have it bad but they get out and they get stuff done they do it but there's a whole different thing when you got internal injuries that aren't visible to the public more people just they kind of look at you and shun you so they don't understand as much if you're missing a limb People are a little bit more sympathetic, and which is good and bad. It's, I don't want to get into that either. It's, sympathy from people is good, but then it's bad because it could hold you down. That's all I'm going to say on that subject. But, you know, internal injuries, injuries that, you know, back, shoulders, neck, hips, knees, stuff like that where people can't see you're suffering. They they mild at you a lot. They get on your case a lot because they don't understand the pain. And the pain can be really bad. I've been there. I know. Pain is really bad when you're when you got all these internal issues. So. But even with that get up get out do something don't sit around it's hard take your time go slow start off light start drinking the water a little bit more um, somebody's gonna hate me for this but a glass of bourbon one a week nothing wrong with that it calms your nerves it filters your system out cleans your kidneys now just a glass I'm talking a small glass a week or a beer a week you can eventually maybe go up to one or two beers a week or have two beers on a weekend or a glass of bourbon on a weekend of one weeknight maybe some wine with dinner during the week 
that's all fine. It's not going to hurt you unless you have kidney issues and the doctor tells you not to drink. But you'd be surprised how many people with kidney issues. Doctors said, okay, you can have a drink or two a week. How much it's helped them clean their system out. So, anyway, so don't be afraid to have a drink. Don't be afraid to, to try to get out there and go slow. I'm not telling you go join the gym, take a walk, walk around your yard, walk around the house. You know, if you don't feel like getting outside, especially in this cold, this is where I suffer. This cold puts me down pretty hard. Right now, I'm hurting. My back's hurting, my neck's hurting. I've got headaches. My uh, hands are starting to cramp up. My knees, my hips. I mean, I'm, I'm in pain. But I'm out here trying to get this done because I know there's a reason for this. I know this spring, this summer, I'll be out there trying to help families and help other guys doing this and we'll be finding people and on top of that we'll be cleaning the environment you know we'll be going back and forth and going to different lakes rivers creeks ponds and we'll be cleaning so you know get out there do something you know find your calling going to get dive certified this spring I have not done it. I should have done it when I was in the military, but I got medically discharged. Didn't get a chance to do that. I wanted to. It was on the list of stuff I had to get done anyway. So, but I didn't get it done. But I'm gonna do it now. You know, <laughs> years later. It was 90 when I was out, so. And I'm just now getting ready to go get dive certified. 221, 2021's when I'll be certified. Hopefully, if all goes right. So, I gotta come up with the money. And I gotta come up with money for equipment. And then after I get dive certified, if I get the money for that, get my equipment, get all that paid for, then I'll work on maybe getting a, maybe a Helix or something. Get a Hummingbird Helix so I can do some scanning. Um, I don't know if I'll get 360 right away. I think that's what I was looking at. We're looking at a thousand dollars more, thousand plus more for the 360 unit that goes along with the side scan. It doesn't come with it. You got to buy that transducer separately. So you know, there's a lot of money there. We're probably talking by the time you get a boat, I don't know how long this motor will last. I might need a new motor eventually. We're talking probably ten, fifteen thousand to be able to do this. You gotta have tanks, you gotta have the equipment. Um Jared, I'm gonna get a hold of you once I get done here. You know, once I get certified this summer and if everything goes right, I'm gonna try to be getting some lift bags too, so you know, that, that adds up, so it's going to take time, but in the meantime, I'm going to get this done, I'll work on getting my certification, and then work on getting my equipment, and then I can start helping people. I'm already doing magnet fishing, i got a cheap magnet, and you know, it is what it is. I can't afford a, uh, a brute magnetics just yet, but... You know, like I said earlier, the brute, I think the least one is 600 pounds. You get hooked to something on that. Man, <laughs> you got to be strong if it's something that's not coming out of the water. Or you got to be able to figure out how to get it off of there. So one I've got right now will lift about 360, I think. So that's that's good enough. It'll, it'll pull stuff out of the water. So... Might not pull an engine block or a car. <laughs> I don't plan on pulling a car with a magnet. But it'll pull guns. It'll pull phones or scrap metal, you know, knives, stuff like that that needs to be out of the water. Tin cans. It'll it'll do it. So I'm not too worried. Yeah. You know, 
I got what I have to get what I can get done. So, all right, again, out of here. I'm gonna finish working on this. I'll tell you more about disability later. You know, it, it's it's more personal. As a matter of fact, I'm not gonna say anything unless you all ask. And then I might private message. I don't know. It's more personal. But if you are disabled, you need somebody to talk to. Hit me up right here. Send me a private message. You know, I'll talk to you. I'll talk you through stuff. I'm I'm here for for you if you're disabled. If you're a veteran, mental, physical disability, doesn't matter. If you're a veteran, you just want somebody to talk to, hit me up. Yeah. You know, if you're in Northern Kentucky area and you're interested in doing this stuff, not just the motor, but going out and doing uh, search and rescue, uh, recovery, clean up the environment. If you're interested in that stuff, you're in Northern Kentucky area, hit me up. I'll put my email on here. Uh, everybody keeps saying I ought to put a PayPal link, but I don't know. I, I just don't feel right about doing that. But if enough viewers tell me, go ahead and put a PayPal on, PayPal, I might do it. But I hate asking. You know, we'll get it done eventually. It's just going to take some time. But, you know, if people really want to help, let me know. I'll put a link up and I'll get a PayPal and put it on there. Just, I'm, I'm not going to ask that. So. Anyway, good seeing you all. Thumbs up for that like button. Even though it's a long video, please like, subscribe. Hit that notification. Put comments in there below. And we'll see you on the other side.